Air Canada is the national airline that even some Canadians struggle to love. I've received advice based on past staff issues, including the problem of friendliness, basic meals, tight economy seats. But I'm going to test all of that with fresh eyes and hope for the best in today's nine-hour trip from here in Dublin to Vancouver, Canada, direct. I'm Patrick Hughes and this is Planet Patrick. Unlike the majority of transatlantic airlines here at Dublin Airport, Air Canada doesn't use Terminal 2 and the check-in area is Area 11. I've been here for about five minutes and there hasn't been a line either for economy or priority passengers. As today's flight is in economy, there is no lounge access to enjoy. But the one thing Dublin Airport has is plenty of shops and restaurants to satisfy every craving. With that question mark about the food options in Air Canada, I stopped into Boots to stock up on some tasty snacks, just in case. My confusion about why Air Canada uses Terminal 1 continued on the longish trek to Gate 112 on a concourse usually reserved for low-cost airlines. As I watched people disembarking the incoming Air Canada Dreamliner via steps and not jet bridge, it struck me that Air Canada was saving cash. I was just glad the weather looked nice for our boarding process. Today's flight with Air Canada AC805 is on board a Boeing 787 Dreamliner. We're expecting the journey to take a little north of nine hours. They just announced there's no Wi-Fi on this flight. That's a bit of a disappointment. I wanted to try it out for speed and cost on this nine hour flight. Boarding was strictly by zone. Needless to say, I was in zone five. Hi, how are you? Hello, bonjour. Thank you so much. Time to tackle those stairs with two pieces of cabin baggage. Hi, how are you? Welcome. Hey. Sadly, it's 26k. Yeah, it'll be on the other side. <laughs> Thank you. It's not too bad. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Hi. Bye. I did try to plus grade to premium economy, but my bid wasn't accepted. This mini cabin is arranged in a 232 configuration, while economy is laid out in two larger cabins of 333. I'd chosen a window seat to be able to enjoy takeoff and landing, but the risk on a long flight is disturbing your neighbours when you want to use the facilities. That's where we love we to pray to the plane gods. While we pray to the middle seat gods, I'm settling into my seat. I do like that there's individual air controls. At first glance, the IFE screen seems large enough and it's responsive. The table is, of course, pretty small, but firm enough to take a laptop if you need to work. There's a universal socket between the seats and an individual USB charging port under the IFE. We've been provided with a small pillow and blanket for comfort and that's about it. I'm right over the wing, which will restrict my filming a bit, but let's make the most of it. My first impression is that the seat is comfortable, but quite narrow. Here's the pitch details from the Air Canada website. It's going to be pretty tight when the person in front decides to recline. We are currently praying to the plane gods that there's no one going to come and sit in this middle seat. We're not sure what's going to happen though. Now I'm super confused. They made an announcement about Wi-Fi, but they told us at the gate there was no Wi-Fi on board this flight. I guess we'll find out after 10,000 feet. For your safety and comfort, we ask that you pay attention to this short I was glad there was a decent selection of movies and shows on the IFE, as in fact the in-flight Wi-Fi did not function. Not great if you've been relying on it for work. Chicken, please. Lunch was a veggie salad, chicken and rice, a dry bread roll, cheese, which was literally a texture and not a flavour, and 
a chocolate brownie. The salad might be a little bit elderly, but the chicken and rice is good. So this is one of the standard economy bathrooms. Let's see what it's like. There's a sink area with what you'd expect, some hand towels, hand wash. Through there is the other bathroom. And down here is your toilet zone. It's a little bigger, a little bit more comfortable than an A321neo. These wide body aircrafts do have slightly bigger toilets. Sorry. Keep. There's about an hour and a half to go. It's been a very smooth flight so far. This is about the first time that we've hit a little bit of turbulence, but even then it's not too rough. And yes, it is very dark in here because everybody has darkened their window blinds. Just as I speak, they've all been brightened. Isn't that a coincidence? It's likely that the crew are going to do the second meal service soon, which is expected to be a pastry. Some very specific instructions to open this way. I will obey. This looks a bit like a savory version of a McDonald's apple pie. It smells good though. No discernible chicken but I'll still eat it. I have not been able to hear a single passenger announcement. They could be announcing some sort of a drama, and I would have no idea. But I remain happy in my seat. Anticipating uh, having you on the ground, you know, at 30 minutes time, that'll be at uh, 10.45 over time. Uh, temperature's uh, plus 14 degrees. We thank you very much for joining us. Hope you've enjoyed today's flight, and we wish you a pleasant day. Thank you. the premium economy seats. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks. Please. Thank you. Bye. Well, that was nine hours on board that Boeing 7879 Dreamliner with Air Canada. And I have to say, it didn't feel like nine hours. It felt much easier. I must say, I think my experience on board would have been much less comfortable if someone had been sitting in that middle seat. Let's sum up the overall experience. On the plus side, I found my limited interactions with the crew to be both professional and efficient. I had more than enough options in terms of movies, shows and an interactive map, and the toilet facilities were kept clean throughout the flight. On the minus side, the experience at Dublin Airport felt more like a low-cost experience. At the most distant gate, queuing for each boarding zone, no jet bridge. There was confusion too over whether the Wi-Fi would work or not, and in the end, it didn't. Finally, while the chicken dish was okay, the rest of the food tray was of very basic quality, and that salad had seen better days. Overall, I give Air Canada my own very subjective score of 5.5 out of 10. Let's go through passport control next and see how things are with the SkyTrain here in Vancouver. It's a little bit of a schlep here at YVR. I have no bags to collect today, so that should be a little bit easier than normal. Thank you. Here we go. What a beautiful day it is here in Vancouver, Canada. And I have to say that passport control was very straightforward today. I didn't even speak to a person. Less than five minutes and I'm standing outside. I'm taking the SkyTrain from here at the airport right into the city centre. But you can also pick up a taxi here, use a ride sharing app and take a bus if that's your preference. Use the link in the video description below to find out all the different ways you can get from Vancouver Airport, YVR, into the city centre.
make sure that you're subscribed. You can follow live stories on Instagram at This Is Planet Patrick. Until the next episode, take care. Bye bye. <gasps> Sorry for whispering at you. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not pointing in your direction. Don't worry. Just uh, don't be surprised if I start chatting towards you, but it's not at you. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna be on YouTube. <laughs> oh, you will. <laughs>